Uh, okay, uh, we're here along with my colleague Diana Gustandino from the Cyprus University of Technology in order to present to you our Network Operation Center. Uh, first, a couple of words about the university. The Cyprus University of Technology was founded in 2004 and it's located in the old city center. Uh, it was an effort, let's say, to renovate the old buildings uh, which had some historical value in the town. So it was uh, a venture that, you know, basically renewed the old town. Uh, the university first accepted its students in 2007. Uh, at first it had something like 400 students and now we have reached approximately 25,000. And we're still developing. Uh, our building network and services infrastructure is still under development in the sense that we are, we are currently in the first phase of um, building the university. Some more phases and expansion will uh, follow in the near future. And it is expected to be finalized by 2020 or something. So we still have a long way to go. Uh, we have recently been licensed as an ISP one of the ISPs in the island. Uh, even though we don't currently offer services to the general public, it is one of the goals and aims of the university in order to be able to contribute back to the community, um, to the town itself. Uh, a few words about our network infrastructure. Our internal, our internal network consists of two core sites which are being run by two Cisco 6509 switches. Basically all the remote sites are connected through dark fibers to those switches. And currently we have more than 15 buildings being connected to those core sites. Uh, CWDM is being used in order to interconnect these two sites along with any other sites that may have, uh, let's say, critical importance to the university in order to offer, let's say, more bandwidth and these sort of things. And, uh, the services being run in our network mostly consist of uh, the data, voice, and video over IP uh, as a joint, let's say, in our communication environment. For our internet connection, we are using two Cisco C7609 uh, perimeter uh, routers, which have integrated firewalls on them and are basically being set up to run the redundant BGP with two ISPs in order to be able to let's say have uh, no downtime, hopefully, but um, it's being done as that. And as said, the infrastructure is still under construction. We are expecting more buildings to come into the campus, and we are also developing more services to offer both to our students, our faculty, and in general to the general public uh, later on. For our network operation centers, we are using two tools. Uh, the first tool is the SolarWinds Orion, uh, which has three, uh, three modules. Because of the small lead time that we had in order to make the university productive, let's say, from foundation to accepting students and be able to offer some services, uh, we did not have the time, let's say, to develop something in-house or try to expand something on open source. So we went through the uh, enterprise solution, let's say, and got the, the solar winds Orion at first in order to be able to set up a monitoring tool. And this was also done because of the lack of staff in order, uh, let's say the network team currently consists of five, five people, so we don't actually have the personnel to develop and monitor and troubleshoot the, and solve the network problems. So we are going through the easy solutions at this time. Uh, the first module is the network protocol monitoring, which is basically used to gather the statistics over SNMP, check the host if they are alive or not, and provide the network map along with the alerts and, support and reports. We also have our charts based on uh, network usage, uh, etc. Uh, the second module for uh, Solar Wind Solar Orion is the NetFlow, which covers the network, stati network stra uh, traffic statistics, along with top conversations for each building in case that somebody <coughs> is overutilizing the lines or there is a virus outbreak. This is one of the ways that we use in order to, let's say, find the infected pieces, etc. 
and uh, it's also, it also provides some really nice graphical charts along with uh, the custom reports that uh, as we saw from the earlier the, the presentations for both Isinga and Nayos, uh, reports are mostly being covered through plugins. So this thing already has them integrated and it pretty much makes our lives easier. Uh, the third module is for the applications monitoring. The, uh, this module uh, uses, let's say, uh, some templates in order to be able to monitor the services on some servers, such as HTTP, SSH, or even more, uh, for, for let's say, for Sovos antivirus, it, it monitors the, 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 the enterprise uh, uh, management service, let's say, if it goes down or up. And, also for emails, etc., it, it is being used in order to, to monitor those as well. Uh, the second tool that we are using is uh, the Cisco LMS, which provides the simplified network management in the sense that if we have to make a configuration change, we don't have to go through all the switches uh, separately. We can just organize a script and send, the, send it automatically to all, to all or to the intended switches in order to make the updates. It assists us in both troubleshooting as to if some, uh, let's say, you, you can do a show interface command which we run on certain interfaces and they will come back in, the, in a graphical report. And it also being used actively for configuration backups in order to avoid, let's say, if something breaks, we already have a database with all the configuration that pre-existed on the switch and it can easily be replaced. With regards to the facilities, we have uh, an oak room for two engineers currently being set up. Uh, the infrastructure behind that we are using the Cisco Digital Media Suite uh, with eight Cisco screens, 42-inch uh, screens. And then uh, some DMPs in the back are being used in order to broadcast and show the monitoring web pages on those TV screens. And it is a very flexible solution in the sense that we can organize uh, certain tools to be shown on one screen, being rotated, be, uh, and being refreshed on various intervals. So it's a pretty good picture. Even though our uh, NOC currently, as I said before, we have a lack, uh, shortage of staff, is not being, uh, let's say, manned 24-7, and, uh, and the personnel is mostly as five who are mostly outside, this could be said that uh, it's still a work in progress. And we are uh, hoping to uh, be able to mount that station soon enough. And it also provides the facilities for helpdesk and standby engineers who are on call in, in case something goes wrong uh, after office hours, they will be responsible in order to get back and resolve the issue. For our evolution, uh, we can pretty much say that our network operation center is still a, a project under development because even though we have these tools, they are, I cannot say that they are sufficient in order to be able to successfully monitor everything and have valid alerts and the graphs that are being required for every single purpose. We still have to put a lot of work in it, but I think that we are on a very good uh, the one thing that we haven't integrated yet with our network monitoring, because currently it's only being monitoring the network services, we are soon enough to bring in the, syst uh, the systems team and do an integration on, on, their to on the tools that they are using in order to check their virtual machines and their infrastructure. We are soon enough to, let's say, integrate them with our monitoring tools and be able to be shown on that NOC screen and make the and make the NOC a one-stop station for all IT-related problems and not just for the network team. And once it is properly manned and integrated, we we are planning in order uh, for, to, to give the NOC engineers the both the authorities as well as the permissions in order to be proactive. I mean, if they notice that something is going up, make it a one-stop station and resolve the issue before it gets, uh, let's say, elevated to a higher problem. Uh, that's 
it from me. Uh, I can accept any questions and mostly suggestions as to what you guys would recommend for us in order to be able to, let's say, uh, elevate the quality and the, uh, of, of our network evaluation center. Because as I said, we are pretty new in this area. Are you using a ticketing system? Yeah, we have a ticketing system through our help desk. It's from, uh, I'm not sure what the name is. Uh, DNA. Uh, it's from, uh, yeah, it's from DNA, DNA and that support. <coughs> so everything is, you bought everything? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, everything was, been, uh, was bought. We don't have any active development currently within the network operation team. Uh, but, you know, with the economic crisis going on, we, we'll soon be running out of funds and uh, we need to go open source. So your, <laughs> your suggestions are, are more than welcome. And may, maybe this is why the metrics will be useful for us in order to find, you know, we too, we should first aim in order to go to, you know, first apply to. You got the 24 7 knock order you run on only on weekdays, work days? No, it's uh, basically the, the work day schedule. We don't have it 24 7. It's not even uh, on a shift currently. It is being thought in order to do it in the future. But since we don't have any public uh, services being offered, let's say to the general public, and it's on uh, mostly for the university staff, then uh, it's not 24-7. So if a service goes down, you react it on the next morning? Uh, depends on the service. I mean, if the web server goes down, there are standby engineers that can uh, take action, yeah, not immediately, within the first hour, let's say. And they get alert, alerts? Yeah, yeah, they, they, we get the email alerts and... Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the standby engineers uh, have, a, have their image set up and uh, they, they can view it right away. If I understand correctly, now if you call the, the knock, you get a network engineer? or uh... Basically, at this point, you will have to go through our help desk and uh, then they will connect you with an engineer if, uh, okay. you know, and the if one is available. Will the help desk in the future do the classification if it's a services problem? Problem. Basically, we plan uh, that is being planned in order to go uh, because, as I said, we are planning to get the systems integration along with the network monitoring. The knock engineer that will man the station will be able to make that call if it is a services or a, a network operation. Uh, because the monitoring tool will tell him. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a difficulty that we had. So they, you have to have some yeah. intelligence to classify the problem to which one, yeah. but then the help desk isn't supposed to have a lot of intelligence, otherwise it's not a help desk anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's a bit controversial, but <laughs> you have to try to find people that speak a lot of languages, well, for, for my country, and then they have to be uh, capable, capable to diversify the, the different problems to the correct group, and so those two don't really match. So, yeah. uh, yeah, basically, uh, let's say within our service, uh, everybody is IT related. I mean, uh, the university is, uh, is divided to different services. So even though our head desk is uh, the first guy that will answer the phone is already IT related and will be able to classify the problem. So it goes on through there. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.